Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm gonna go over my Langmuir Systems Crossfire Pro. We have the Razor Weld Plasma Cutter along with the Machine Torch. And what I'm gonna go over is our whole setup, the air system, the plasma cutter itself, and the table. Starting off with the air system, we have a 60 gallon DeWalt compressor. I know it's a little larger, but I definitely recommend getting one this size or even bigger. I don't know how they do it with the smaller ones. This thing turns on pretty often, so I'd figure that the small ones, like 30 gallons, that they're just constantly running. Uh, there haven't been any problems with this so far. It's been doing its job just fine. We had to rewire the electrical in here a little bit to get everything going because it is 220, but it's been going perfectly fine after that. And we have it hooked up to a dryer system right here. Here's how the whole system looks for our air. It's really straightforward. At the beginning, we just have something to remove the moisture from the air. I'll put this down in the description below. Everything that I use and thought that was useful, I'll put it in the description below. So this takes out the moisture. There's a gauge right there that we have set to a certain amount of PSI. And then over here, we have a motor guard. So those beads that dry the air, they create dust, and that's why I use the motor guard at the end to get rid of any of the dust that was created. And for this dryer system, we use these beads right here. I'll put them below as well. They're reusable. You could dry them off. Uh, it's been working great. When the air is dry and nice, then the cuts come out looking fantastic. And we just have that going from the motor guard right here down below and straight into our plasma cutter. And it's been working well so far. Moving on to the table itself, we haven't done anything too crazy, but a couple of things that definitely make our lives easier and things a little more efficient. Starting off with welding it down the middle. We did put the silicone first, but that was leaking, so we went ahead and just welded it. That's after it was screwed down already, and uh, I know people say it causes warping and stuff like that, but we didn't have any problems really welding it uh, with like warping or anything like that, and it's been great so far. No leaks or anything after that. Looks like it's holding up pretty well. And if we take a look under, we got rid of the drain system that Langmuir provides. We just put some valves at the bottom, which has been amazing because we drain the water almost after every use just because of our setup and how we have it. And it's been great just to open it and makes things a lot easier. We have that on both sides. So moving on to the legs, we never used the feet that Langmuir provided because we wanted wheels and the ability to move the table around the garage. First, we bought cheap casters online. That didn't work out because there was excess vibration and the table didn't really seem stable. We went ahead and bought these more heavy duty ones. Um, it has two different parts to it. Right there, you can see it's resting on that rubber base, but you can spin that orange uh, thing in the middle and have it on the wheels instead so you can still move it around. And this is great. It feels a lot more stable, um, but it still gives us the ability to move the table when we need to. I definitely recommend getting them. The only thing is we had to get these end caps right here and thread them down the middle so we could actually use these feet. It was a little bit of extra work, but definitely worth it just because it feels much more stable and it's higher quality. And for table maintenance, I recommend getting WD-40 dry lube. I wipe down the rails and the lead screw before any use just to get any dust off or anything. Then I spray them down uh, very sparingly. And then I give them a wipe with a clean rag. And it's been working great so far. I heard people have issues in the winter with binding. I haven't gotten there yet, so we'll see. Maybe I'll switch over to something else during winter. Um, but for now, it's been working great. We went ahead and purchased the vice online as well. This is a Yast vice, so it's a pretty reputable brand. And we also got this brake die set. The brake die set hasn't been that useful. It's good for making one nice bend in metal. That's about it. So when we did have to make one bend, uh, like a 90 degree, then it works great. But other than that, if you do more, I just don't think it's accurate enough. However, the vise itself, definitely recommend. It's come in handy with the plasma cutter and other stuff in the meantime as well. So that's a quick overview of our setup. If you want to see more videos, uh, for example, the settings that we use when we cut, or how we clean the processed metal, let me know below. Thanks for watching.